Welcome everyone to the show. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I appreciate it. I love your comments, your questions, your topic ideas. So please do feel free to share topic ideas. Uh, you can email us at info or hello at Avalon Spirit um, or even in some of the comments here on YouTube if that's how you're watching this. Definitely do send in some questions because I'm happy to answer them. And this one came as a question. I was having a conversation with someone and they asked me, what happens when we die? And I was like, well, I mean, all kinds of things. And they're like, this would be a really good thing to talk about. And I was like, well, you know, I do talk about it, but I realized to just focus on sharing what I know of what happens when we die would be a great idea. So here we are. This is the topic for today, one in which I'm sure many will be interested in. And I do want to say as a little bit of a caveat or a disclaimer is I can only speak of what I know. That is, that is my thing. I can only share what I have experienced in thousands of readings of having spirits share their experience of crossing over, what it was like for them, what they felt, what they saw. And then of course I can pull from my own near-death experience in 2019, which I know many of you have already heard. So this is where the information is coming from. And I say that because regardless of any one story, the experience of crossing over is unique to that person always. And so that's something I think we have to keep in mind. Um, so I say that in hopes that it really helps you to open your mind, take in the different ideas, and then just kind of allow the energy and the information to just kind of sit and, and use it as a resource for any point in which you're going through the grieving process of somebody. Maybe you are sitting in a position where you are preparing to transition based on illness or injury or, or something. This is information to help sort of take away the fear of the idea of dying and really seeing it as, as something in the way that we don't actually die. We just transition into a different form. And I'm going to talk about that in the podcast today, about what kind of that experience is like too. So we're going to get right into it. So first of all, um, what does the body experience when we die? This is a really great place to start because I have seen several different ways that the body can experience death. So one of them that is really quite common is the idea of like an in-breath and an out-breath and then you're on the other side. And I have had so many spirits explain this, especially when they passed from either a really uh, long-term illness the point in which they were ready to transition, the moment of transition was like they took one breath in the human world and then when they took their, when they released that breath, they were already on the other side. It can happen that fast. It's just an instantaneous shift of energy from one dimension to another dimension. Uh, I've had other spirits explain it like a sudden blink where you blink and you're in the human world and then you blink and you're in the other world. I know one person, uh, one spirit, when they passed, they were hit by a car and they were running across the street to save a pet of theirs that ran across the street and they got hit by a car and they got hit and they actually kind of kept running and didn't realize that they had popped out of their body. They didn't have the experience of impact because their spirit essentially kind of, or their higher self or however you want to see that, they were pulled out of their body before the point of impact. So they didn't even quite recognize at first what had happened until they turned around to see uh, their body, which was very shocking. And we wonder, you know, would that be really shocking? Yes, it is very shocking for many spirits. And it takes them a little bit to kind of understand that, holy, I just got like booted out of my body and I'm totally, completely me. I still feel exactly like me, but I'm not in my body anymore. And at that point is when spirit guides, guardian angels, and all of that are very much near the person to try and bring them as much comfort and an understanding as fast as possible to make that transition easier. I've also had other spirits explain the point of transition as a very gentle release. The imagery that we've seen before in movies, 
uh, different videos of when a spirit just kind of sits up out of bed and gets up out of their body and walks off into heaven. I have had so many spirits explain that, that it really was like that. They just kind of sat up and got up and walked away. Uh, most of the time with having a family loved one who's already passed waiting for them. So it's really quite beautiful and very like ethereal. Um, another, another one that's quite common is for people to feel like they just kind of float up out of their body and float up into like a white light or bright light. That's very common. Again, it's very, very peaceful. And I do want to say that even in traumatic experiences of, of death, traumatic events to the body, so let's say a car accident, 9.9 uh, .9 times out of 10 in all of the readings that I've done, the spirit will be pulled out of the, the body just before the point of impact because most of the time the point of impact has no use for the experience of the soul. So what often happens is the people that are left here to hear about the accident, hyper-focus on the accident itself because it's super traumatic and absolutely so, but the spirit that actually experienced that impact, the body, they didn't feel it. They were pulled out right before. And I was one time shown this where there was somebody who had a head-on collision with a semi and the spirit was showing me this, that like a fraction of an inch before the actual collision occurred, like right a fraction of an inch before the car hit the semi, they were pulled out of their body. And that is such a common thing. So I really want to, I really want to emphasize that for those of you that have lost people in a traumatic injury, um, most of the time they're not aware of that. They did not have to experience it. So that's something that can often be quite um, comforting to those that are here. Now, another neat thing with the body, another way that spirit explained it to me actually one time when I was trying to explain to my kids when they were younger, like what is death like? What, what happens to the body? How does it feel? Is they explained it to me like taking off a jacket. So the body is essentially like a jacket for the spirit to help us be present in this environment, right? Just like if it was a blizzard outside, you would need a jacket to help you be present in that environment. But once you come back inside and it's warm, you take the jacket off and you hang it up because you no longer need it. Now, when you take the jacket off, you don't mourn the loss of the jacket. You just hang it up. The jacket has no more value to you inside the house because you are warm. And to try and take the jacket with you and have it inside the house would actually be stifling. It would cause issues. So you leave the jacket at the door, but you are still completely you. There isn't an aspect of your soul energy or personality that is left in the jacket. The jacket is a shell that helped you be present in an environment. And so that's really what happens when we release the energy of the body. We're not attached to the body. We are still, and sometimes even more so, whole and complete. Now, if I bring that to my own experience with my NDE, when I was on the other side, I felt 100% like me. 100% me as I am talking to you right now. I felt a physicality to myself. I felt a connectedness to all things. So it was like me plus more, me without limitation. But I felt very much like me, even though I knew my body was still alive in the surgery, but I wasn't like, concerned about the body. It was somewhat irrelevant to the point in which when they asked me if I wanted to come back, then I was like, well, yeah, I value this body, but I never felt like I was not me. And I really want to emphasize that because people often ask, like when my loved one passes, are they still them? They absolutely are. Plus more, more expanded, more everything, but they still are them. So the body really is the piece that detaches. Now I do want to say though, the body does carry its own frequency of consciousness. And that is why sometimes when someone is passing or crossing over and the doctors have said, you know, any day now, uh, maybe they've even been taking off, taken off life support, but they're still hanging around. There is a certain level of consciousness to the body that also has to release 
the soul. So the soul can release the body, but sometimes the body doesn't quite release the soul yet. And in a situation where the body isn't broken down enough, like a traumatic accident or a brain injury, um, the body also has to release. It's kind of like a bond between the two and, and they both have to let go. So that's why sometimes someone's spirit could be completely ready to cross over, but the body hasn't quite yet let go. So something to consider. Now, one other thing I want to say too is oftentimes when we experience people suffering at the very end, um, and I'm talking like three days or less before they're passing where they don't really seem like they're conscious and they're kind of like moaning or groaning a little bit. When I've seen people in that situation, most of the time their spirit is actually hovering at least half, if not more, removed from the body. So it's the body that is experiencing that energy, but again, the soul is starting to step out so it doesn't have to experience that level of discomfort or pain when they're that close to the crossing. So something to consider. Now, what is it that we see when we cross over? What will we see on the other side? Uh, the beautiful thing is that it can be anything. Now, here's the neat thing. The consistent pieces are that loved ones, spirit guides, or special religious figures will be present for you when you cross over because it is all about bringing in comfort and actually celebrating the return of the soul. They want to gather, they want to celebrate and honor you. And so usually in the days leading up to someone's passing, especially if they're ill, there will be loved ones near. And that's when you often hear about people talking that, you know, Grandpa Joe is by the bed or, or Auntie June is, you know, by the bed or they're talking about seeing this or this or this past loved one. They in fact are there. And they are surrounding them and ready to welcome them home. Because again, when we cross over, we're not left alone. The perception sometimes of being alone in that moment is because we're just not seeing what is around us. But we are always, always supported. So we will see loved ones. We will see pets. We are definitely reunited with pets because pets have a beautiful consciousness. We are united with uh, angels, guides, and then often we will find ourselves in some sort of space that is calming to the body. So like I said, when we cross over, it's kind of like if you picture a school hallway, on one side is our 3D world where you're human, then there's a hallway, and you cross that hallway, walk into the next room, and that is heaven, so to speak, the other side. That hallway is just this transition point and there's no size to it. There isn't a geographical distance to it or anything. It's frequential. It's a frequency. It's kind of a 4D frequency. You move through 4D into 5D. And once you step through that, which can just be as fast as a snap, a moment, then you are in wherever will support you best. So that could be uh, floating down a river uh, in a raft that's beautiful and you know has snacks in it honestly it could be expanding into consciousness it could be lying on a pillowy soft bed for me I, I ended up at a family barbecue a beautiful picnic type barbecue which was beautiful lush green grass beautiful trees perfectly blue sky and everyone that I've known in this lifetime and lifetimes beyond um, there can also be this transition point where we just are connected into elements and consciousness. That's something that can't quite be explained. And I've seen this before with some people where a couple hours after they transitioned, when I went to go check in, and check in on their soul, I could see them in this process of they're basically um, undulating colors. So every chakra color is moving through their spirit essence. It's beautiful and it's like refilling their soul frequency. So it's quite stunning. Sometimes too, if we've had a really challenging crossing, maybe it was very traumatic, maybe it was a very long illness that just affected the emotional sense of self as well, spirits can find themselves in a resting place. So somewhere that brings them comfort where they can kind of catch their metaphorical breath and start again. And so sometimes that can be a bed, sometimes it can be the hospital type setting. Um, 
sometimes it could be like an ashram it could be the forest i've seen somebody in a tent by a lake because they were just resting there it can be anything so again it's always being supported as we move through those steps it's quite beautiful so then people always ask like okay well then what happens after so you know i lost my family member they crossed over and now what Well, this is the neat thing. So I don't have all the answers to that, but I do have some answers. And what happens after? So after we cross over, we have what's called this life review. And I remember doing my life review during my NDE. And mine, I was at a boardroom table where we rolled out my life blueprints and we reviewed everything up until that point, which was the point in which they asked me if I wanted to stay or come back. So when we cross over fully and we're staying there, we do a life review where we, I've seen some spirits show me that they essentially watched a movie of their life. Others have kind of flipped through a book to see these like living motion pictures of their life. Um, Others, it's a blueprint like mine was. And in that, we get to experience all the ways in which we treated people, both good and not so good. We get to reevaluate certain life lessons. Do we feel we gained what we wanted from those? Do we feel we need to redo anything? And it's at that point we get to kind of take stock of that experience with no judgment. There's no one sitting there judging you for this or that. Your guides are with you and they are helping you to see the growth that you gained in this lifetime. To see some clarity of maybe where things didn't work out as you had hoped but what did you learn from it? They kind of help you like decompress from the whole experience um, and, and bring it together in this beautiful picture of soul growth. And so we have this life review. After the life review is where we get to kind of decide where we need to go, what we need to do. And so I've seen some people choose to just spend some time relaxing. They maybe had such a full life that they're like, I just want time to just be in this beautiful energy. And so some I've seen some fishing in a river when I've called them forward to communicate in a reading they put down their fishing rod and they come out they've got their like hip waders on and everything that's their heaven I've seen others um, completely expanded into the cosmos they are one with the galaxies and planets They, they are so unlimited they are expanded into cosmos others want to expand into kind of the earth frequencies the elemental frequencies kind of merging their energy with trees, merging their energy with animals, just seeing what it's like to be spirit, to be in that higher dimensional frequency that is not earthly like we are in 3D. I have also seen souls go into almost what looks like a school type setting, more like a university type setting where they get to learn more. So they take everything they did in their lifetime and then they choose what they wanna learn next. So it's kind of like going to university After you had your lifetime from grade one to grade 12, you then go and specialize in something you find interesting. And so the soul will go and do further learning on a soul level to most likely prepare to come back in at some point down the road and have another lifetime. There are other souls that will spend time helping teach other souls. Um, Maybe somebody had a lifetime where they were a psychologist a therapist of sorts, and they will keep that principle with them and help other souls that maybe had a really challenging transition. And so on a soul level, they'll help them make sense of everything. And then there's there's others that decide to stay very connected to humanity and be guide-like, whether that be a family member choosing to stay on as your spirit guide, which I have definitely seen, Um, And just because a family member doesn't choose to stay as a spirit guide, it doesn't mean they can't come around and communicate with you and give you signs and all of that. There are just some that choose to take a very specific role as spirit guide. They're really invested in it. So some will, will be spirit guides. Some will help to try and work with the higher realms to create, um, understanding kind of collective spiritual energy information that we can pull from. And then there's something really interesting. There's what I call over the hill. So in my vision, at least, this is how it works. When I try to find a spirit for somebody and we're looking for them, there's a point that is like this big grassy hill. And I think really it, it was probably like that grassy hill of my NDE where I was able to walk up the hill and see what's on the other side. 
because I'm not actively transitioning now, I had my NDE, when I go into the realm of spirit, I can't get closer than kind of three steps away before what I call the door of the other side. Or another version of that is I can't go over that hill. That is in the realm of full on heaven and spirit. And you can only be there if you are meant to be there at that time crossing over. And that's a different place than astral travel. Astral travels to different dimensions and time. That's a different realm, if I could call it, than the realm of heaven, so to speak doesn't mean you can't meet spirit guides, family members, and other realms, but there's something about this place that is over the hill. And in that place is where spirits are doing something so much more, Um, whether that be something helping humanity, deeper spiritual soul growth for them, uh, whatever it may be, I don't know what's beyond there, beyond my own experience in it. Um... It's, it's quite interesting and I have more questions for my guides about that and some of which I won't be able to know yet. So there are realms beyond our reach, even from this human perspective, even in deep meditation. But it's always with the intention of soul growth and expansion. So all of this to say, when you lose somebody in your life, they have, first of all, so much support in their crossing over and everything is put in a way to give them the most ease and grace with that experience. And again, that might mean having their soul be pulled out of the body before a point of impact, before extreme suffering. If there is value in their soul journey to understand suffering, which again is probably one of the hardest things for human minds to understand, why would we want to suffer? There is wisdom gained in the experience of suffering. And one one example of many could be the act of surrender. So for example, someone who has lived their whole life always doing, 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 holding frequencies for everyone, organizing everything for everyone, never relying on anyone, but being the one that does it all, their soul may also desire an experience of surrender. And the way in which they can get that experience is through illness. And so being so debilitated that they have to ask for help, they have to rely on others, may be, excuse me, their soul's experience on surrender. And I'm simplifying it for the sake of trying to share the idea, uh, but it doesn't take away from the the struggle that that is in the human form. So I want to say that very clearly. But that being said, we are always supported through our journey. And um the whole experience of crossing over is deeply supported. Our experience post crossover is supported. The desire to communicate back with those that are here is also supported by the higher realms. There are sometimes where I will try and communicate with a spirit that's crossed over and I can't reach them. In that case, usually their spirit guide or spirit team will say they're just in a resting place right now. They need to go through a few of their own things, make peace with it before they can come through but they should be able to connect back in in two months, three months, four months, whatever number they give me. So again, always supported. So if nothing else, what I would wish so much for all of you to be able to take from this podcast is first of all, that we don't actually die. We just change form, but you will not lose who you are in your heart when you cross that threshold. The second thing is, is the amount that souls value their human life once they cross over is immense. There is so much gratitude for what they learned and experienced, even the hard things, even the suffering. So something to consider about the value of your life and who you are right now is so big, not only by your spirit team, but by your higher self. And then the third thing is, is that when our loved ones cross over, they are in the most beautiful place of their design. So whether they're expanded into cosmos, fishing on a river, um, maybe they're just laying in a super comfy, cozy bed with snacks. I have seen that before. Again, they are in their most beautiful place to bring them comfort. And they always, always I hear this message is they do not want us to worry about them. They are more worried about you and your continuation on and your growth rather than themselves. 
They don't want you to be held back because they realize life carries on and that they will see you again. When it's your time to cross over, they will see you again. And when they know that, it takes the worry and the pressure off. And so they wish to share that with those that are left behind. And they just want to see you thrive and grow and carry on and learn so that you can make the most of your life while you're living it. So I will leave that with all of you for today. Thank you so much as always for joining me and uh, for this question too. I'm, I'm so glad it came up. So again, if you have more questions, please do email us and uh, I'm happy to answer them in podcasts. It's fun. I enjoy it. I love to share. So I hope this helps all of you become a little bit more comfortable with transitioning and that life goes on and you will go on. So I will leave that with you all. Have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you next week.